Sunday morning. My skull felt like it was about to explode. Stomach was cramped up, mouth was dry, and every time I tried to get out of bed, a wave of nausea rolled over me, forcing me back down. What a way to spend my last day in Night City. With nothing else to do but wait until the worst of it passed, I toyed around in my hollow. Kept checking for a message that wasn't there. I tried to keep my spirits up, telling myself that it was still early and that Judy probably wasn't in any better shape than I was. But, as the morning wore on, I began to get the distinct sense that solitude was all that the day was going to bring me, that I'd been forgotten once more. Couldn't blame Judy for that. We'd both been wasted and amped up on adrenaline following my gonk showdown with Susie. She'd already gone above and beyond. What more could I ask of her? Another chance to connect? Why? What more was there to say to her that I hadn't already said? Christ, V. How about three little words? Here, I'll give you a hint. They start with I and end with you. Shut the fuck up. I had to get up and find something to do besides developing bed sores. Slowly, I climbed out of bed, gulping down the bubble of acid reflux that tried to pop free from my throat and wobbled to my feet. Once I was certain I wasn't going to make a mess of myself, I shuffled to the bathroom and relieved myself. There. At least I'd finally accomplished something. I was just finishing pulling my pants back up when my hollow buzzed. My heart raced with excitement as I reached for it, causing the jackhammer in my head to pound away at my temples in fresh pain. But I didn't care. She'd remembered. Maybe we could... My smile faded. Unknown caller. My disappointment quickly turned to rage. I tightened my grip on my hollow, heard the casing squeak in protest. Could have crushed it if I were still chipped. The smart thing to do would have been to ignore the call. But something inside of me wouldn't let it go. These were my final hours in NC, and the city seemed intent on reminding me of just how small and insignificant I'd become by trolling me with spam. So, I swiped my finger across the screen and waited for the target of my wrath to appear. When she did, my jaw nearly hit the floor. Bianca, not some random telemarketer, stared back at me. There was a hint of wildness behind her eyes, as if she knew she were doing something she shouldn't. Couldn't make out her surroundings very well. Almost looked like she was standing around inside of a hotel bathroom. Hey, she said plainly. Uh, hey, I managed, not bothering to mask my shock. Is this a good time? For what? Sh sure. Bianca glanced at something off screen. Definitely worried. Had to be calling without Judy's knowledge. Which made this all the more intriguing. Her eyes darted back to me. I know this is awkward, but... I've been thinking about this all morning. And finally decided I wanted to talk to you about last night. Okay. You seem like a good person, V, and I can see why Judy took a liking to you. And in a perfect world, maybe we could be friends. But? But? And I'm just gonna be direct with you. I don't think that's such a good idea. What? I blurted out. Why? 
Bianca looked like a deer caught in headlights. What? Why don't you think it's a good idea for us to be friends? I clarified, already suspecting the reason. Is it because of Jude? Judy's got nothing to do with this. I said nothing and allowed my silence to repeat the question for me. When Bianca realized I was waiting for an explanation, she sighed. <sighs> well, Atlanta's a long ways away from Pittsburgh for one thing. It would be pretty hard to maintain- Why don't you just cut the crap and spit it out already? All right. I don't think it's healthy for either one of you to keep seeing each other. She reached out to you because I told her to, because I felt sorry for you and thought it would help both of you get some closure. It's a pretty fucked up situation after all. Now that that's happened, I think it's best we go our separate ways. Judy's moved on. It's time you did the same. So this was about Judy after all, as if there'd been any doubt. Fine. Might as well put all our cards on the table seeing as how the wife had just blindsided me. You want to know what I think? I think you're threatened by me. I might not know the first thing about how the two of you came together, but that's right, Bianca cut in, her tone sharp. You don't have a clue what we have, what we've been through together. We love each other, V. We love each other so much that we chose to spend the rest of our lives together and get married. So don't tell me I feel threatened by you when I'm the whole reason she even reached out to you in the first place. And another thing, while I appreciate what you've been through, there's only so much we can do. At some point, you gotta pick yourself up and move on. Think I haven't been knocked down time after time? Think I don't know what it's like to have to pick up the shattered pieces of your life and put them back together again? I glanced at my reflection in the mirror. The woman staring back at me looked weak and unsure of herself. She was right. I didn't know the first damn thing about what their relationship was really like. Facts, timelines, a sprinkling of context. That was all I knew, because that was all they'd shared with me. I didn't have a clue what their domestic life was like, how they talked to one another, what they did for fun, how they made love. Didn't know about all the memories they'd shared, or what their wedding day had been like. Didn't know what their own Laguna Bend moment was. All I had to go on was what I'd observed, and... As angry as it made me feel, there was no denying that Judy hadn't fallen for someone abusive or toxic. Bianca had her flaws, case in point, but they certainly weren't any worse than my own. She came across as kind, compassionate, smart, all things that Judy prized. And I could tell from the passion in her voice that she hadn't been exaggerating when she'd said she'd been through her own fair share of bad relationships. And worst of all, I agreed with her wholeheartedly. It was past time that I scraped myself off the floor and got a move on with my life. I was tired of living like this, one foot stuck in the past, unable to advance towards the future. And yet, last night hadn't been a fluke. We had felt something, I was sure of it, a spark of the flame that we'd once shared. But so what? What could either of us actually do about it? She was married, 
two years removed from me, and I was set to fly off to Atlanta tomorrow to start my own process of rebuilding. Nothing would come of it. Nothing could come of it. All I could do now was put it behind me and wonder, what if? What if I'd called Pan Am that night instead of Reed? What if I told Judy how I really felt about her before leaving? What if she felt the same way about me? What are you really worried about? I finally asked, voicing the question I longed to have answered the most. That I still got feelings for Judy? Or that she might still have feelings for me? Bianca's lips parted. Empty air escaped her throat, but no words. Look, I began, aware that this conversation was turning into a much heavier affair than either of us had likely intended it to. I'm not trying to steal her away from you or anything like that. I appreciate everything you- I can't do this. Good luck, V. With that, she hung up. I stared at the screen long afterwards, trying to process everything. Part of me wanted to call Judy and tell her what Bianca had done. Would certainly feel good. But another part of me, the louder part, knew that that was a recipe for disaster. Judy would take her side. She'd have to. Whatever we'd once had, our time was over. There was nothing to be gained by reopening old wounds, especially ones so painful. I looked at my bag. Everything I honed fit neatly inside with room to spare. So this was how everything came to an end. Not with a heartfelt confession that Deep down, I had always hoped might happen. No. Things had ended exactly as they'd begun. I was alone. With a sigh, I sent a message to Chuck, telling him I would be at Dirty Dick's in an hour for my last shift. I'd waffled over it all morning, and while I really didn't want to show my face there again... The simple truth was I needed the eddies. His reply was anything but gracious, just a stern warning not to cut him out of any tips or to skip out early. It was a fitting end to my life in Night City, a perfect homage to all the hopes and dreams I'd left by the wayside. Well, I said to the phantom voice in my head that I knew wasn't really there. At least I'm finally getting myself out of this shithole. Might be getting yourself out, but you're leaving behind the best part of you. And what part is that, Johnny? Need me to spell it out for you? No, I admitted, fighting back tears. I don't.